what do you do? Like you're on staff, obviously, here yes. at Hillsong. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about what you do and what you oversee? Well, my wife and I basically oversee um, Hillsong Germany and yes. Hillsong Zurich. Which is incredible. Which right now is, we've got a location in Constance, which was the first location yes. that we had. Started that 15 years ago after we came back from college. Wow. And um, we started a location in Düsseldorf and in Munich and in Zurich, which is the German Swiss wow. part. One year after, after um, I had moved to Australia and I met all my friends and um, I kind of got, I realized how much I had grown. Right. And they were in my faith and, you know, in just who I was, but they were still kind of stuck where they were. Sure. And for me, it was pretty clear it had nothing to do with that. I, I was better than they are. Right. It, it was all about the environment. You know, I all of a sudden had an environment where I could flourish. It like expanded and, your view. Yeah, just... totally. It was just like, yeah, um, like a greenhouse yeah, kind of thing. And so, uh, that's when the dream started of, hey, I want to go back and create an environment where people can flourish. Wow. And that's when God started speaking to me about starting a church, yeah. I, I love that. that. Move forward with what God had for you, even though it looked different to what maybe what you planned coming yeah. here. Yeah, totally. It was completely different. So was that so. was that hard for you at all? No, it, kind of, it just felt natural. It just yeah. felt like a natural thing, you know? It, it, I don't know, like, it, you know, you know, once your heart gets stirred for something, you just go with the flow, you know? Of course. So for me, I mean, looking back now, and I don't know, I think that's the case with, with, with faith quite often. If you look back and you go like, how was I bold enough to make that decision? Yeah. Like, how did I, where did I have that faith from to, to move countries, to start a church or to move into a building? And looking back, I'm like, I have no clue how I managed to come up with faith to make those decisions. Yeah. But when you're in the moment, I feel like you just go with the flow, sure. you just trust God. And then looking back, you go like, well, that was crazy. Right. I think people often are scared to make a wrong move or make yeah. the wrong decision. So they end up making no decision. Right. So they just um, stand and that's, still. And that's the worst thing you can you can do. And yeah. um, so I just go like, you know, at, at, at some stage, you've got to make a decision for something. Sure. And so just make that decision wholeheartedly and follow it. And God's going to honor that. Sure. As long as you don't make a mistake in your heart, Right. God can cover any other mistake, you know, right. as long as you just, uh, I'm going to do this, yeah. I'm going to give it my best shot. And God's going to, like, He's going to open doors, Absolutely. He's going to close doors, as long as we're moving and exactly. willing to move. So, you know, it was a step, it was unknown. We, I didn't, uh, you know, of course we had a vision, we had sure. a dream, but we didn't know, you yeah. know, but you just go and you just start doing so it cool. and trust that God's going to, you know, cover you and, and, and we'll be there. And it's, it's, it's exciting, actually. So it's, it's exciting to, it's, it? yeah, and it's, you don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where you're going to end up. I don't know. Who but knows? Hey, let's just go. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes we overthink things. Absolutely. And, um, it stifles you once you start doing that. It kind yeah. of. And then sometimes as well, I think, because we, when we did it, I think we were like, there was hardly anyone doing what we did. Sure. You know, I, we didn't hear of too many students back oh, in the days absolutely. that went back and, and, and planted churches yeah. that, you know, so I didn't have a role model to follow. And I think sometimes, um, because these days, I guess if you're at college now, there's so many role models, there's so many things to look at. Mm -hmm. And I feel sometimes that, that's even more confusing because you think, oh, we, we have to do it like that. Or right. we should be doing it like this. And if I read church planting books, we did everything wrong that you can do. Like, you know, like we started, we had our first small group in my old bedroom at my parents' house. <laughs> you know, that's like, that's not how you start a church. Right. Like, that's like, no, that's uncool. Um, and, but at the end of the day, if it's God ordained, it Absolutely. doesn't matter whether the style or whether the method or all of that, right. it just, it's going to fall into place if your heart's in the right place and you're just willing yeah. and bold enough to make a move. God's sure. going to cover all the rest. Yeah. So, so don't get met, like so, so, um, uh, I'm stuck up with, with a method or yeah. just 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 go. Okay, so you guys get married, you're in Australia, then you go back yeah. to, and then did you leave and go back to Germany? We just wow. started a small group at my parents' house. That's so um, cool. And uh, once a week, and then we gathered, gathered some people and, and we took it from there once a bit of time. Right, so we just invite people like, hey, we're having like, yeah. a gathering tonight, yeah. and like to come. Yeah, the, the interesting thing was, um, God told Joanna and myself at the beginning to not ask anyone to join. So that was right. kind of like, okay, I'm going there, I'm starting a church, <laughs> I'm not supposed to ask anyone. But then people, people would call my parents' house, people that we d didn't know would find out my parents' phone number and call them and say, hey, we've heard that you are starting a church, can we meet? So literally the first group of people that were there, we didn't ask any of them to join. Right. They all kind of just... How incredible. They showed contact. the interest. In yeah, it. yeah. And so, and then we basically had a small group of about, I would say about 10 to 12 people. And basically then I didn't even want it to grow. 
because I was like, I need, I need to first get a group of people that actually know what we want to do. Totally. So we're like, okay, let's let's just get the vision out there, talk about the culture, what kind of church do we want to build, sure. what is it that we actually want to do? Because we, it was clear that if we grow, we need more people who understand what, what we want to do. Need that core. So we really took some time to. We went. Uh, we took Pastor Bobby's book, Heaven is in This House. Yeah. And. Um, Basically created small group studies from that and just went through it and talked about who we are, who we want to be, culture, wow. generosity, you know, all of that. And uh, and then we added the second small group and added the third small group. And then we, I think we were about 50 or 60 people. We had our first service. Wow. Uh, which is now this year, September, 15 years exactly. So the 5th of September, 2004, we had our first church service. And uh, about 50 people rocked up or 60 people. So, right. Yeah. So we've got four locations now. We've got 12, 12 um, church services on a Sunday wow. like amongst amongst the, the locations and um, yeah, it's fun. That is incredible. Yeah, it's definitely grown a little. A little bit, <laughs> a, little a little bit. Yeah. In the midst of everything you do in your family, as a father, as a husband, yeah. as a pastor, what are things that you feel like you're learning right now? Or even ways that it's you keep question, yourself yeah. on your toes to kind of keep in a place where you can keep moving forward. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think one of the one of the things that comes to mind definitely is that I, what I figured out is that time is your friend and not your enemy. Awesome. I think when you're younger, you want everything to happen a lot, like right now and yeah. fast and quick. Yeah. And uh, and I, what I've learned, I think, over the last 15 years is that good things take a while, you know. Totally. And, and time is actually your friend and not your enemy. And there's a lot of great dreams, a lot of great things that can be achieved over time. Right. And I think. Um, that's one thing that I've learned is just even now when I start planning the future of our church, when I start thinking strategy, all of that, I allow a lot more time um, to, to change a culture and to build a culture. It's not going to happen overnight. Sure. There's no shortcuts. Right. And I think as a young leader, I mean, you go out, you start a church, you want people to get it like that. Right. But I didn't get it like that. Like It, totally it took time for me. And mm -hmm. um, so it will take time for the others to actually follow. And uh, so I think that's one of the things that I've really learned. I'm a bit more relaxed when it comes to time. Yeah. And a bit more, you know, let's just allow God to do what he does. And there are seasons. Let's enjoy the seasons that we're in. Right. And um, learn to read the season that you're in. And yeah. according to what season you're in, you know, design your life and make your decisions. And then just allow time. Yeah. Um, and um, I think that's one of the big things that I've learned. Just to be a bit more relaxed. I love that. Don't strive so much and just enjoy the journey because you know, it's great to have to have vision and to be wanting to see great things. Yeah. But it, it's easy to become really um, and just frustrated and yeah. be striving all the time, and we will miss all the fun part. Totally. And uh, and I think um, that's the the motto of our life. Last year, Joanne and I decided we just put it on our fridge, big on the kitchen. It's like enjoy life. That's so just good. enjoy the life that God's given you and uh, and then enjoy yeah and then I just go that. go with that so much wisdom in that too yeah and and there's there's a gap between you sowing something and you reaping something exactly you know and as the church grows and, and as any organization that you lead grows it the gap becomes bigger yeah you know if, if you're a small church you make a, you want to make a change it doesn't affect as many people change can be quicker but if you have a bigger church with more people in it and you want to create change it just takes a while yeah. so you've got to be patient enough to to sow keep sowing right. and then and see the whole thing shift and you, you just got to learn that totally yeah. what's one thing can be anything you would say to us in light of everything you've seen god do over the years of your life like your childhood up through going to college and up till now and yeah. what you guys are playing for, what's one thing you'd say just of what you've seen God do that you would encourage someone else with? It's probably a little bit my, um, not my motto, but it's what, I, what I've what i seen and what, what I really believe is that those who are planted will flourish so in the end. Good. And I think uh, we're in such a fast moving time mm -hmm. and things change. And over the last 15 years, I've seen a lot of people and I've seen a lot of potential. Yeah. But what I actually, what I've noticed and what, I've, what I have seen is that those who stay planted, even when it's hard, mm -hmm. they're the ones that are, they, they will flourish in the end. That's incredible. So I would encourage anyone to just to keep going. You know, there's, right. there's going to be seasons that are great. There's going to be seasons that will suck. And you know, let's just face it's it. That's just true. the way it is. But we all know that, don't, totally. don't, yeah, don't just don't move around. You yeah. know, don't, just that. stay. Yeah. Stay planted, and God can do a lot more with people who are willing to stay planted than with those who move around and 
look after every opportunity, you know, chasing Absolutely. every opportunity, this and that and here and there. And there's a job offer and here's yeah. a greater church and whatever. Just stay. stay, stick, stay, be patient, stay planted. And in the end, you will flourish. And so I think, um, yeah, that's, I think that's the main thing. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I feel super encouraged by that. Great.